Hi, welcome back to the second part of my Zoltac 3090 Amp Hollow review. And today we'll be focusing more on its mining performance quirks. So before we dive into the mining performance issues, I just want to make a correction from my first video regarding this mystery chip here, the power boost. So after doing some research online, um, there's actually very little information on this. Um, it's, and Zoltac's own website doesn't help. Um, so let me, let me kind of share what Zoltac said themselves. So what Zoltac talked about power boosts is says that it reduces ripple noise, minimizes power fluctuation, resulting in longer lasting amped graphics card. Um, it, it actually means absolutely nothing this this sentence or this paragraph because from a um, engineering perspective um, it doesn't say it doesn't say anything uh, it, it's completely useless and just a bunch of um, buzzwords um, string strung together and, and has almost no meaning but diving into a little bit deeper doing a little bit um, Google search and I found that from Ecolab which is a very famous and respected um, site from Germany that they have just basically deleted removed this nice chrome shiny uh, outer casing and they revealed underneath that there's just a bunch of capac additional capacitors underneath and I'm a little bit curious as to why they need to do this because on, on their original 3090 Trinity OC series they didn't have this. Um, they just used the reference design as is from directly from NVIDIA, and they did it. You know, the performance seems to be fine, and they didn't. You know, there was no additional modifications that they made on to the reference design. But for their second generation Amp Hollow 3090, it seems like they decided that having additional capacitors um, is warranted, and I'm not sure you know how much improvement these additional capacitors um, could bring to the system in terms of for its stability and additional performance I'm, I'm not sure and it could be just a marketing um, gimmick because um, that's what um, Equalab um, have claimed is from the past that when they do this it's really just um, more marketing than any actual improvement in terms of actual um, performance in terms of um, for for the graphics card, so I don't know if you know if they have improved since then. Now the original um, Equalabs review was for the 1080 Ti. This is you know number of years ago and many generations before. So whether or not the same um, capacitors um, that's added for the new RTX 3099s will make any difference, uh, that's yet to be known. Um, there's not enough data or testing to to really say whether these additional capacitors are really going to help the actual performance of the card now you know for s those of you who do not know what um, the capacitors could do or, or, or add to the system it's basically think of it as an instantaneous energy store so silicons um, complex silicons especially things like GPUs and CPUs they have very you know they have wild um, instantaneous power draw so for example you could be operating at 20 amps and then you know in a split second you need to increase your power to 40 amps and it's very difficult for power supplies and other components to you know give you that instantaneous power that's requested by the silicon and when the silicons do not get those type of power then they either there are two things happen either that they won't get the performance that they needed or that you know the silicon may behave in a unstable fashion which could lead to errors or crashes so you know having additional capacitors are usually pretty good and um it it, it, it could help the the situation but it really depends on whether or not the the chip uh, you know really needed those additional capacitors and as I said earlier that the original reference design didn't ask for these additional capacitors and these are something that Zoltac has added and modified the original reference design um, to, to, to add these additional capacitors and maybe they've done something that they've tested and they realized that 
you know their reference design is not able to deliver the power that they needed so they need to add these additional capacitors so I just want to throw it out there and also this is a correction to my um, first video the first video I incorrectly stated that this could be a newer power management IC or PMIC for short um, but it turned out that they're not it's just it's just a bunch of um, capacitors that's housed in a uh, shiny chrome casing that's all all right with that being said let's move on to the um, mining quirk um, quirkiness that I've discovered so as you can see right now I'm mining around 90 95 um, mega hash per second uh, and the reason is that I'm running a whole bunch of processes in the background including the recording of this video so it's going to take some performance from the um, Ethereum um, hashing algorithm so with that let's just say you know 90 mega hash is the current baseline and if you can see down on the bottom here you know the power limit is currently set at 75 and my core clock is neutral I'm not increase or decreasing it and then my memory clock is um, you know plus 1200 megahertz then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you the quirk that I've experienced is in with the old Trinity OC I was able to very easily move this power limit slider up and then I can then increase the um, the power uh, that's available for the GPU so that I can you know tune the 3090 for the most power efficient optimal um, setting to get the maximum hash rate that's possible out of a RTX 3090 which is around 120 to 122 mega hashes per second but then just as you can see here um, in my video that even when I set my power limit to 110 percent the hash rate and the actual power draw here remain around 90 and the power has not increased it's still and I'll remain around 272 to 280 so you know whatever whatever that slider is doing is has very little impact on its actual performance and this is where this is one of the quirkiness I was talking about because as you can see um, you know moving the slider up doesn't really help and improve the hash rate performance I'm still getting around 90 mega 90 to 92 mega hashes per second which is you know okay not great because my old Trinity I was able to get um, all the way up to 121 mega hashes per second so with the new 3090 um, I am kind of stuck uh, I think the highest hash rate I get um, without you know having all this bunch of um, background processes running including recording of this video was uh, around 108 mega hashes per second and I just couldn't go beyond that limitation regardless of what I've done you know increasing the you know, core clock increasing the memory clock increasing the power limits increasing you know the voltage overclocking it underclocking it doesn't matter nothing helped and I also tried um, multiple V BIOSes from other vendors. Um, as you know, um, with some of the RTX cards, you can load V BIOS, video BIOS from other manufacturers. I tried the V BIOS from EVGA. I've also tried the V BIOS from MSI, and none of them allow me to go beyond um, the the hash rate limitation that I've encountered. And uh, and a side note, on trying out the new. Um, trying out different v, uh, video BIOSes from different vendors is I found that with the different video BIOS it, it's actually it actually decreased my performance of the Zoltac 3090M series it seems that Zoltac has now made some customizations to their second generation 3090M Hollow series where the other vendors um, but video BIOS no longer behaves properly on the the new Zoltac 3090s so with that being said you know I don't recommend 
you guys tried the um, video BIOSes from different um, vendors other than the official BIOS from Zoltac because I've already tried multiple video BIOSes and it actually decreased the performance of the card and there's you know you you'll introduce even more issues so it it there's there's some interesting customizations that um, Zoltac has done that is no longer the reference um, reference reference design so that means the BIOS um, will is also cus customized and tailored to only for Zoltac cards at least for the second generation cards so you know you, you can't it's now not possible to use the video BIOS from other vendors and have it work on Zoltac with the older Trinity OC I was run I was I'm actually running currently using the MSI um, 390 watts BIOS and you know again the it actually increased the performance of the Zoltac card and I was very happy that basically you know I got a Zoltac card but I have the performance of some of the higher uh, um, uh, power limit cards from MSI so you know it, it was great but on the amp hollow 3090 there you know I think they they now deviated from the reference design so you just have to be careful that the other video BIOS no longer will work on the, the M Hollow 3090 series. So I just kind of want to throw it out there. Now, maybe down the line, someone will find a combination of video BIOS that can work with Zoltac. But, you know, there are just so many different video BIOSes out there. I don't want to go and flash like 50 different BIOS just to figure out which one will work on the Zoltac. But the popular ones such as uh, MSI and EVGA they will not work on um, Zoltac so if you are adventurous and want to you, you think that you can squeeze a little bit more performance out of your Zoltac car um, from using a uh, video BIOS from different vendor um, maybe there is a combination that will work but so far I haven't found one at least from MSI and EVGA so maybe maybe there are some other vendors out there that may have a uh, compatible video BIOS just want to throw it out there so as you can see right now, you know I've been running for quite some times now, and I'm still hitting that 275 watt um, limit, and my hash rate is still around 90 to 95 mega hashes per per um, second. So this power slider or power limit no longer works. So which means that there's something now new that's running either in the video BIOS or in the actual silicon itself, where it now automatic automatically adjust its own power limit um, based on the current I guess uh, system requests so you know as you know that um, you know ethereum doesn't really use a lot of um, GPU core it just it just needs to use the memory so with that particular workload maybe the the algorithm or the video BIOS has decided that with that type of workload you don't really need to boost the power limit up so it just select a an optimal power limit for you but then you know in this particular case it actually hurts the ethereum uh, mining performance because you can no longer control and find the optimal limit so if i if i set my slider now back to um back to the o 75 75 uh, percent you know and then if we just watch the hash rate it, it, it has n almost no difference between 75% and 110% um, so I just want to throw it out there so for those of you who are interested in using this card for um, you know hardcore ethereum, ethereum mining um, this may not be the right card for you just want to let you know but you know for gamers this is still a great card and for casual miners which you know who wants to you know casually mine a little bit of ethereum during their downtime um, when they're not gaming then this is fine too because you know for casual gamers you know with a few mega hashes here and there it's not going to make a big difference uh, for them but for the hardcore miners you know this this quirk or this this new hardware based control may be a, a, a hindrance and may not be the you know it, it just won't allow you to control it to the way that you want it and you may not be able to get the same performance that you can from the older uh, Trinity 3090s. So that's all I have 
for kind of the part two and this is what I want to talk about and hope this will help some of you out there and um, you know and if I have something new to talk about or more information about the Empower 3090 I'll put up more videos for this okay for now talk to you guys or see you guys later bye